Okay. Okay, so the purpose of this meeting was for everybody to talk about their experiences at their internships as students and maybe some of the main takeaways in what you learned, like not only what you did, but maybe how that type of internship like differs from others or other experiences you've had. And yeah, just trying to, for anyone who ends up watching this, to like show the different experiences that you can have. And yeah, like how they could be different from big firms or just like the wide range. Um, and anything else fun that you want to add? Did you start recording yet, Amanda? I did, yeah. <laughs> I can't tell from here, so I just remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says it's recording on mine. Yep. So we can do introductions again, because I think the only time we did this was the first meeting, and a couple people weren't at that one. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I can go. I'm... So I'm Amanda, I'm a rising fifth year, and I'll be in Blacksburg for most of the summer now. And anything to share? I recently went to Eggleston, which is like 20 minutes away, and it was a really pretty drive. Um, and I went to volunteer for the primaries, which was like a really fun experience. So. Whoever wants to go next. <laughs> You should choose um, some. Yeah, popcorn Tess. Hi, my name's Tess. Um, I'm a rising fifth year going into my thesis year. I am still in Orange County right now, which is Central Virginia, super fun. But I'm planning to go back to Blacksburg for a little bit next week, which is the first my roommates are hearing about it as well. So um, Anything to share today? I finally got my vehicle to pass inspection, which I'm really excited about. I had to like do a bunch of patches in the floor pan because it was it's a bunch of rust down there, but it passed today. And then I took it out on the road and one of the tires fell off. So we're dealing with that, but everything's good. Popcorn Joey. Thank you, Tess. That sounds, I don't know if I can follow that up well, but um, um, my name is Joey. I am a rising fourth year. Um, I am at home with my family in Northern Virginia, uh, Woodbridge, Virginia. And I have just been, I've been reading a lot, just as much as I can. Um, it's been nice because I hadn't made the time to read long for for a long while so i'm glad that this has at least allowed uh that that time for me so anyway i hope everyone else is doing well um popcorn to sam did sam go first i'm sorry i've okay no sam, you're on hello my name is sam um i'm gonna be a fifth year this upcoming year um where are you this summer i'm in blacksburg this summer and i probably will be for most of it um anything to share i just went to the chesapeake bay for um a few days pretty much this past whole week so that was really fun because our project this past semester was in virginia beach but it's still kind of in the same ecosystem but it's nice to like go and live there for a week and see all the stuff and get eaten by a bunch of mosquitoes and that was really great so, yep. Yeah. Uh, popcorn to Lainey. Hello, <laughs> my name is Lainey and I'm a rising fourth year. Um, where am I this summer? I'm kind of been, I've kind of been like flip-flopping between New Jersey and Virginia. Um, and anything to share? Um, not really. It's been kind of like a, a slow start to the summer, so. Pretty much it. Popcorn Owen. Is he still on here? Hey, how's it going? I'm Owen. Um, I'm coming back next year as a third year, part two. So that that should be fun. Um, yeah, right now I'm working at a garden center. It's called McDonald Garden Center. Uh, it's kind of like a little local 
uh, local place. We were actually designated an essential uh, business. And so we got to kind of coast through this quarantine, you know, wearing masks, obviously. But it's, um, it's been pretty interesting. I'm learning a lot. I actually just got back from work. Um, Mother's Day was kind of our peak. So right now we're just kind of like coasting through the rest of the season. But uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fun past few months. Uh, popcorn, uh, Amaria. I don't know if she can hear us, so Popcorn Alex. Alex, you there? Can everyone hear me? Cool. Yes. Okay. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Alex. Seems like all of you probably know who I am. Um, yeah, I'm just in, I'm in Blacksburg right now, chilling with a couple of cats and uh, a new bunny and my girlfriend, who's next to me. So I'm having a good time. I'm kind of following Joey's lead. I'm just uh, reading a lot of books and chilling out. So I guess I'll popcorn back to Amaria if she can hear me. Uh, I don't know if that can see me or if that can hear me. Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. Yeah, hey, um, I'm Amaria. I'm just going to be jumping in and out today because I'm so late, but I still want to participate. So. Yeah, my name is Amaria. Um, right now I'm a fifth year. Landscape is my minor, and I'm studying city planning as my major. Um, I'm in Blacksburg for the summer, so yeah, I don't have any new shares. Glad you could make it. Yeah, thanks. I think that means Grayson's left, and then Susan, if she'd like to introduce herself too. Okay, I'm Grayson Blackburn. I'm a rising fifth year, finally. Uh, and I'm working at a winery in uh, Abingdon, Virginia, kind of doing both field work and kind of in the actual wine making room, um, getting stuff ready and producing bottles and not really dealing with people at the bar, which is thankfully um, not my job description. But I'm definitely learning exactly what I'm asking maintenance people to do when I'm telling them to uh, take care of what I'm uh, designing. So that's definitely uh, uh, useful knowledge. Um, yeah, Popcorn Susan, if she's interested. I think she's unmuted, but I also don't hear anything. But we do, hopefully everybody watching this too knows who Susan is. <laughs> so we could, maybe she comes back on later than she could, but she's the landscape architecture advisor. Does she also do industrial or is it just landscape architecture? She does interior, I think. Interior, okay. Yes, and she's great. So we could move on to the main portion of stuff. Or I think hey, Brooke, we have. What are you doing? Oh no, Brooke! I'm sorry. <laughs> I no, thought Brooke. I was gonna slide by. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm in. I'm Brooke, <laughs> and. I'm gonna be a fifth year, and uh, oh, I'm I'm in Bozeman, Montana, working on a ranch. Um, oh, was anything to share? Oh, I've been dragging people into like go swimming in freezing cold water with me, so that's been fun. It's all like the snow melt, so everybody's hated it, but it's been super great for me. Okay, did I miss anybody else? <laughs> okay, um, Sam, do you wanna go over these if you'd like to? Yep, so these are just some upcoming events or things just to keep an eye on. Um, I think this was maybe in the last page about this, but uh, you can get a student membership for free if you haven't already signed up for it. 
comes with a lot of really cool things like the landscape report, which is a twice weekly news source. It sends you a bunch of really interesting articles that are really relevant to what's happening in the current time. So yeah, if you haven't already signed up for that, definitely do that. Um, the Virginia ASLA Fall Conference logo competition is also going on and the deadline is coming up next next week. I think that's on a, yeah on Monday. So look into that. If you click, all these are also hyperlinked too. So you can just click them and it'll tell you some more information about them as well. Um, the Weitzman School of Design at the University of Pennsylvania, they are hosting a series that goes every single Wednesday, I think all the way through September, but that's at 6 p.m. every week. Um, they've done two or three already. So they've been really interesting. They're kind of run a little bit long, but I don't think they post up recordings anywhere. So uh, definitely check this out if you can on Wednesdays. And next, next week is gonna be hosted by Laura Starr. She's pretty cool. She was in one of the past, um, past webinars as well. Um, and then this last one is an event that's hosted by AIA. Um, it's another webinar, it's sold out, but they're gonna be putting up a recording. So you should definitely click the link and check it out next week, um, maybe on the 30 of July 1st after, after June's run out, but that should be a really interesting webinar and they will be putting up a recording. So definitely look out for that. And yep, these are just some ongoing resources that you can also click on as well. They should be all in the drive. Um, so either click them from the PowerPoint or through the, um, through the drive and you'll be able to find out a lot of cool things. All right, I think Brooke is first. So I'll just let me know when to click to your next slide and I'll click onto the next one. Okay, I, I didn't do like I did one thing. That's okay. Click. Okay, I have notes on my computer for the questions. Um, so my, well, my first internship is with an engineering company, LJA Engineering. It was in Houston, Texas, and I, that's what I did last fall for my fourth year for semester. Um, and it was kind of how I got the job was just sending out a lot of random applications, which I know is not typically what happens, but for fall for like, I don't know how many opportunities are this fall, but there's just more firms looking for interns or less competition for interns in the fall and in the spring as well, but that's not um, super opportune for our program. Um, so yeah, so that was like a online like Indeed application um, and by chance got an email back and they wanted to expand their department, the landscape architecture and planning department. So I was there with three other interns. Um, so yeah, so mainly an engineering firm, like um, they have a couple different offices in Texas and in our office, there was about 800 employees and about 30 of them were in the planning and landscape architecture department. So. <laughs> That was a really interesting experience. Um, uh, what, did, what were the other questions? I just, I wrote down like my answers and not the actual questions. So um, <laughs> what I did there, this is important. What I did there was working on a lot of like residential development, large scale residential development projects in um, like Houston suburbs, which wasn't my favorite, but it like allowed me an, a lot of opportunity to work on like my CAD skills and Photoshop skills like these images. I was a lot of a lot of time to do those because all of the higher ups um, were in meetings all the time and like really like in communication with other staff and engineers and kind of like going to sites. So the interns had a lot of leeway in doing all the drawings and graphics for a lot of like concept projects. So that was really when I started to build graphic skills. So that was a real plus. Um, Houston wasn't my favorite place. That was important, I think, when you're looking for an internship. Um, if you're really unsure and just like hopping around, then like me at that time, um, 
So it was good to know that that's not somewhere I want to be long term. And as well as like working for a larger engineering firm, like now I work with engineers, but it's just like two. And so um, that experience was very helpful. Where I stayed um, for my internship because it was so far away from my actual home. Um, I lived in uh, an Airbnb, like a long stay Airbnb, and I commuted to work. It was like 20 minutes. They do that. And um, for like two and a half months, I was there. Computer skills. Da -da -da. Um, yeah, so this is one project we worked on. Um, it was a bike trail. Um, and it was working with the hydrologist in the engineering hydrologist in one of the departments um, to do some bike trail concepts. And then otherwise, oh, this, I, I can't point to it. I'm like pointing on my laptop. It's, I did some just like other like sketches and the BH was just for like a complex. So you can, yeah. <laughs> So I had time to do like some graphic design as well. So they just kind of, when you're an intern, you kind of get thrown random things and it's nice. Um, so overall, it was like worth a worthwhile experience of learning what I did and didn't like about working for a large firm um, and an engineering firm specifically. So next one. chickens <laughs> um yeah <laughs> so now i'm currently here at hard scrabble ranch and i uh, bozeman montana if that wasn't clear um this i got through just networking my sister's old roommate was starting here last year when they bought up the property as um like developing a farmland and farm to table for a guest ranch. So hate to say it, but networking is important. <laughs> um, so that's how I got this job. And I am technically the landscape architecture intern and I'm doing a lot of like the outdoor planning, which is not going to happen for some time, but it's, it's gonna happen like in the fall after I leave and next summer. So I'm just giving them plans and working with the engineers. Um, yeah, sketches, the graphics and, oh, I did like a, like a composting infographic, just like some like random things I just need to get done around. And it's, uh, it's small, there's like, I guess there's like 10 other people living here now. Um, and just like summer staff working on getting this guest ranch ready for larger events. So res it's like, it's not commercial work, but it's not residential either. They're, they're like an Airbnb type thing, like Tess was saying earlier, um, or asking earlier. So I really enjoy it here. I don't think like long term, like these are the type of projects I want to work on, but I'm really glad that I like reached out and got a job here for this summer because now I'm meeting people in this place um, that I can like reach out to once I graduate uh, for other internships and opportunities. So that's been really beneficial. Um, I live directly in the ranch right now. I'm here. <laughs> So there is no commute to work and it's about 30 minutes to town. Um, da, 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 I, guess, I don't know what the third question was, but yeah, working on present like renovations. Yeah, so besides like actual landscape architecture work, I'm just doing like learning a lot about renovating in a, a giant barn and like next week and we're going to be painting the barn and I want to paint those chickens on the chicken coop and then they're expanding the property so I'm going to work with like developing uh, some like greenhouses and plots for cows so learning a lot and uh, I don't know what else I have to say yeah, just another opportunity that's more like fine-tuned into what I 
where I want to be and kind of a little bit more like what I want to do long term. So the benefits of internships. Um, I'm done now. I'm done. I forgot I I forgot I put that in this morning. Um, also sketching a lot. I didn't want to just show graphics. I've been sketching a lot and I had no scanners. So So this is an internship that I did uh, two years ago in the summer of 2018 after our second year. Uh, it was a horticulture internship in Massachusetts, uh, in West Tisbury, Massachusetts, which is on Martha's Vineyard, little island off of the coast of Massachusetts. Um, so it was really um, very plant-based, very horticulture oriented. So. I didn't have a ton of you know, office, office experience um, in terms of landscape architecture, but it was definitely a really valuable experience um, getting to work in the garden every single day and just be outside and you know, learning the, being able to maintain and do the, or, yeah, maintain the designs that we do end up designing sometimes. Um, so I was a horticulture intern. I found it through a website that Tess actually shared with me, which is the APGA, the American Public Gardens Association website. There's a search engine where you can find a ton of internships through there. Um, a lot of them are related to public gardens, which I felt like was a good first stepping stone in terms of an internship experience because I'd never worked anywhere like this before or done an internship. So it was a really, really great resource. Um, it was just, the process was just, you know, your basic cover letter, resume, and then a Skype interview, which I think is pretty, pretty common for a lot of them. Um, my job title, I was a horticulture intern and I did a lot of maintenance. So a lot of watering, weeding, mowing, all that stuff. Um, so it was really like, really pretty physically demanding, but I think you, in doing that, you create, you gain definitely an appreciation for, you know, designs that make it really hard to maintain versus maybe a little bit easier to maintain places. So that was really, I think something pretty good. Um, in terms of the living situation, down here in the bottom left, we stayed at this house that was run by the Nature Conservancy up in Massachusetts. Um, they would house a lot of people on the island because there were a lot of um, people who came there for summer jobs that worked with a lot of the conservation and preservation programs there. Um, there were three interns at Poly Hill, so we were the only three people in the house at the time. I'm not sure why. There was nobody else, but uh, historically, that's what they've done, and so it can hold up to 20 people, but it wasn't directly attached to the um, Arboretum. It was about a 10-minute drive away. I ended up driving, so it was a nice, it was nice to have a car and be able to explore the rest of the rest of the towns that were nearby, um, so that was really fun. Um, what were my expectations, and what did I learn from my experience? Um, so this was the first internship experience that I had ever had. Um, and so I think I definitely went into it with an open mind and a will, like a willingness to ask a lot of questions because I really had no idea what I was doing. So I had to add a lot of, ask a lot of questions. Um, I think one of the best things about it was just the location. I think going somewhere different from where you usually live and living in a completely new place offers a really great opportunity to not only learn within the job that you are actively doing every day, but also just to learn about people who live around you um, and just the different environments that you, you don't, you know, really just aren't used to. I've never been to Massachusetts, so this was my first time up there and definitely the farthest away that I'd ever been away from home for sure. I got to do a lot of cool things though. We would um, uh, maintain a lot of the gardens that they had. They had set up a lot of pollinator gardens at local schools all around the island, so we spent one week just going to the different gardens at the schools and making sure they were um, not completely infested with invasives. And we would do, there would be lectures every week or every Thursday and we would get to learn a bunch of new things. I got to use a blowtorch to kill weeds, which was really cool. Um, I got to power wash. That was also really exciting. I'd never done that before. Um, the person that I worked a lot with, he was a certified arborist. So I got to learn a lot more about trees as well. As it was an arboretum. Um, so yeah, you learn a lot 
in terms of oboe culture that you really would not have, or I probably wouldn't have learned before. Um, and then one thing I did throughout the entire summer, it was a 10 week internship. And so I started an Instagram page to kind of document everything that I'd done and all the, ins all the experiences that I had there and everything that I was learning kind of continuously throughout the summer. Um, so it was a great way to just keep asking questions and keep learning and a way to just hold yourself accountable for, you know, continuing to act actively learn. Uh, so each post is like super long and has a bunch of pictures and about all the things that I did or just around the island that may not even be related to the internship. But I think that's maybe one of the biggest things that I learned was that the internship itself, it's not just about the job. It's a lot of it is related to the location and what you make out of your three months or 10 weeks living in a new place or something like that. So follow my plant account if you don't already. It's filled with a lot of plant pictures. Um, but yeah, so that was my internship. I thought for some reason you had two, which is not correct. You just had the two pages. Okay. Um, so same as Sam, this was two summers ago. Um, I was hired at Oak Spring Garden Foundation. I think my original title was um, land management intern because I was hired as basically like an assistant to their land management main guy. Um, but I ended up doing a lot of research and like field work throughout the summer. Um, so background on the foundation, this was located in Upperville, Virginia, which is about 30 minutes from my parents' house in Winchester. So I didn't end up staying on the property, but that was an option, but I ended up commuting every day, um, which was totally fine. The drive was really beautiful. And it's the way that the foundation works is that it's um, an old property of Bunny and Paul Mellon, and they were very wealthy people. So Bunny Mellon started this foundation as a way to um, like reach out to students and give them educational opportunities. So it was a paid internship because of that. And they used the foundation as a way for me to be hired to be um, this guy, Michael Gage's assistant, like research assistant for the summer. So if you work with a foundation, the money might be tricky. I kind of learned that along the way. That was kind of like a weird thing that I found out. Um, so the research throughout the summer was really self-led. I was hired as an assistant to somebody, but it became more about <clears throat> me exploring, like trying to date architecture on an adjacent property, which I didn't have a lot of experience in. So it was a lot of me like trying to kind of research as I went and figure that out. And that was for about half of the summer. And the other half, I worked with the Piedmont Environmental Council to create this book, which is what you all are looking at. These are some of the pages from it. Um, and we worked on this the winter after that summer internship. So I stayed in touch with these people and tried to help it get finished, which I think is like something that's important is to maintain those relationships once you've left too, because I think that they'll end up being really valuable and useful later on, especially for networking. Um, and it just shows that you're probably more like responsible and reliable. And hopefully you do like the people and you want to stay in contact with them too. These were really great people to work with. So I think I learned like how to be accountable for myself since it was only me working on this stuff and I had to do a lot of independent field work here. Um, so the project was designing a set of trails in this um, area that was still being used as farmland. So working with how they rotate the cattle, um, what areas should be cleared out of invasives and kind of what areas should be cleared in general. There was an old historic road that ran through the property that they wanted to use as kind of the first phase of the trail. So I learned a lot about land management in general. And I think that working so close to home was nice because 
I feel like I already had that understanding of the ecology there. So that might be something to consider if you want to apply somewhere else for an internship or like you aren't familiar with the ecology. It might actually help like make you a stronger intern or a candidate if you are familiar with it or it just helped for this job in general. But um, I think that was it for that one. The other one's a little bit different. So I was hired through Western Pennsylvania Conservancy and they're like this overarching conservancy that has a lot of properties um, all along Western Pennsylvania. And one of their properties is Falling Water, which is the house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. And it has existing properties around it. Um, basically there's the, the main house, there's the barn that's up the road, and then there's a couple of farmhouses. And we stay in one of the farmhouses that was about a five minute drive from the main house. And I stayed with four other interns, and there was only one other landscape intern working with me, who is in this fo in, the, in these photos with me. Um, this was not what I expected at all because I think going into it, I thought I would be like more engaged with the landscape around the main house. But I found out that when I got there, that they owned <laughs> five thousand acres technically. <laughs> so we worked like with a lot of the existing property like around the house. And this internship had been going for decades, so they had it down pat, like, what locations were kind of in need of renewal and maintenance. So we did three different designs around the barn, which is in the, like, the couple pictures on the top left. Um, we cleared out a lot of the, we proposed some plants, but we kind of got too far into the season to start planting things. So while we did do some designs, I kind of felt like we could have gone farther or worked faster in that capacity. But the other pictures were everything else that we like shoved into the summer, which was like meeting different um, groups in WPC around Pennsylvania. We did planting, that hillside planting photo on the bottom right is by the guest house which is like right behind the main house and the property. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, and then we did the cut flower garden, which was the first project, my first week, I think there. And my boss does that every year. And that's where they get all of the flowers to put in the main house, which is really cool. Like it's all kind of its own little system and you help with different parts of it. So it looks immaculate <laughs> and they do a lot of work um, within falling water to keep it looking that way. And I think we were only involved with like a little bit of that, but um, it was really enjoyable. Living on the property was interesting. I think that before you choose to live somewhere, you should definitely do research about where it is and maybe evaluate physical resources. And also if mentally you're ready for that, because I think we lived basically in the middle of nowhere. It took me I would call it like a, a food desert, it felt like, but that's just because there were a lot of farm properties there. Um, so it took me about like 20, 25 minutes to go to Walmart to get my groceries. Um, because you're only living with four other people, if you don't get along, that's not a good thing. We did get along, so I was happy about that. But yeah, I think that was the biggest takeaway is just like understanding where you're gonna live for a summer if you go somewhere new. Um, and then also, I think working for like an overarching conservancy is kind of nice in some cases because you can go to their different um, locations and meet new people. So we spent like at least once a, a week, it felt like I would meet somebody new or go visit a new place around Pennsylvania. So I really got to know the state. And yeah, I think it was just really important to establish those connections and stay in touch with those people. I think that's all I have for that one. Hello, um, this is me, Tess. And this is the first of two internships that I did at Public Gardens through the Public Gardens website, which just to plant that again as a really good resource. Um, my first few years of school, I didn't feel like I had 
like the connections or the portfolio to get a job at a landscape architecture firm, but I still wanted to do things that I felt were like relevant and enriching. So this was a really great way to get that experience and also be able to see different parts of the world, starting in Madison, Wisconsin, which is where Ulbrich Botanical Gardens is, which is, um, it was just, it was a very nice garden. I was a horticulture intern there, so my duties were a lot of like planting things, managing the beds there. They had a lot of different places. So I got a lot of really interesting um, experience in all those different gardens. They had like the only Thai pavilion in all of North America. And there were people there that had met the princess of Thailand. It was a really interesting garden. I got to do like Japanese um, Zen garden raking in the upper left-hand corner. That was just so cool. Um, my living situation was that uh, they get in contact each year with volunteers to see if any of their volunteers who are normally just like cool old people will host students for the summer. So I got paired up with this one old lady named Donna who was just incredibly rad. I lived at her house for free in exchange for taking care of her garden for about four hours a week. We actually still talk on the phone a good amount. I think the last time I called her was maybe a month ago and I need to call her again just to check up on her. She got like a knee replacement recently so I gotta make sure that's going fine. And let's see, Madison, Wisconsin as a location was really great. I really vibe with that town. It's got a really nice hippie air. And it was one of those places. It's not like one of those big cities that I had heard of or thought very much of before, but I absolutely recommend it as a place to visit. It's also really close to Chicago. So I was able to do some traveling around. I saw Taliesin, which is another fun Frank Lloyd Wright building. And as far as gardens go, I got a lot of good exposure in the city, but also with the garden, they had some really interesting practices, like um, they transitioned their rose garden into one that was all native roses, and they just had some really interesting planting schemes that I still kind of took that experience of working with them and doing plants in that style with me, so it's kind of still continuing to influence the way I think about plants. So it was really helpful to be in that environment and just see that really good design and be able to exist in it and see it for so long. So next slide. My second internship that I had at the public garden was at Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens, which is in Richmond. And it was a lot more research-based. It was, I was technically a research intern. So I spent half of each day working on a research project that they kind of predetermined beforehand based on what the needs of the garden were, which was really interesting. And I really enjoyed that. I was studying Southern blight, which is a fungus that affects pretty much all of our vegetable crops. And there's not really a great cure for it, so watch out. <laughs> not yet. My research was inconclusive, but it was still a really good experience to be able to work with the research process and like figure that all out, come up with a plan. I ended up with the strategy that I wanted to test out of burning the soil since it can't sustain high temperatures. In fact, um, it's called Southern Blight because it's mostly in these warmer temperatures. It can't go further north than Virginia, but with global warming, it's actually spreading further than that, so it's becoming a larger problem. But uh, it can't sustain high temperatures, so one of the solutions for it was stretching plastic over the soil through solarization and just letting the sun's rays go down and bake the fungus. But that's not something, it generates a lot of trash through the stuff that you stretch over the soil. And it's not really an ideal solution for all parts of the US, especially Virginia, because it's not actually hot enough. We're right in the sweet spot where it's not actually hot enough to be effective here. So I was trying to burn the soil. So I got to apply for a burn permit. I got to do a test setup, and then I got to ultimately present my research findings there. It was just a really cool experience. I don't think I would have specifically gotten within landscape architecture or any landscape architecture internship. And it showed me that I like research. It was cool to really dive deep into Southern Blight and just become like a little mini expert in that. I really enjoyed that and I'd like to be able to have some work someday where I can do those kinds of specific research things again. So when I was there, I was just living in an apartment that I had subletted from one of my friends. And it was just like a 10 minute walk to get there. It was very convenient. Um, that's pretty much it for that. And then this past summer and fall, I was working up in Vancouver, Canada at a design build company called Paraspace, which um, 
I found this through some networking because I do the National Collegiate Landscape Competition, which is just like a bunch of, I'm probably gonna, I, it's like a bunch of landscaping competition things. It's like excavator precision things. And I do landscape design and 3D design parts of it and woody landscape plant ID. It's like a landscaping thing. And while I was there, they had this one um, just fun night in a community center. And while I was changing into my bathing suit in the bathroom, I met someone who I got into a conversation with and she turned out to be an HR person for this company. And we had a really great conversation. And I ended up making a nice connection and getting this job through that. So it's good to go to these events. It's good to talk with as many people as you can, even if it doesn't seem like a relevant situation, because worst case scenario, you make an inconsequential friend. Best case scenario, you get a job for six months and that helps you apply for a Canadian visa and live in the city of Vancouver, which by the way, rocked my socks off. Vancouver is another really great city to recommend. It has a really cool, diverse culture. It has so much food, it's really tasty, and it has a huge rainforest right in the middle of the city that's on an island. 10 out of 10 city, you gotta visit it, it's great. My living situation there was I was staying in this $5 million mansion that they rented for all of their interns. It made sense in the summer because they had like eight interns there, but um, in the fall, it was just me and another person. So that was really cool networking. Um, and some of my duties there. For the first part of it, I was doing uh, more of the build side of it because I wanted to learn about hardscaping and that kind of construction because I had a lot of experience in softscaping and planting things. So I learned how to do laying pavers, making retaining walls, that sort of knowledge. And then for the second part of it, I transitioned into the office to do uh, some design work and also a bunch of site visits where we would just go to different sites and look at what they had there and um, make write-ups for redesigns or design improvements that we could try to sell them in the following years. And so by doing that, I was able to get a lot of experience in kind of evaluating what works on a site and what doesn't and seeing how these sites perform in the long term. So I was able to get some good, valuable experience in seeing that. I think, um, a lot of the stuff that they did though was a lot of like residential or commercial residential things in the city and I don't know if I'm quite as interested in that as I would be in more public projects. I think that really showed me that I want to steer more towards that rather than the traditional design build format. But overall I think one of the best things from that internship was just being able to be on in Vancouver on the west coast being able to go hiking and mushroom hunting and see Seattle and Portland and just the importance of travel is very important. Let's see what else. Yeah. And if you can, visa things are not too hard to do. If anybody wants any advice with that, I can I've been through the process with it now and it's really cool to see another kind of culture as much as Canada is another culture. And just Go for these experiences. I'm done. Okay, so this is me. Um, I interned at Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, and so I guess I'll go through the questions. Um, what was your internship and how did you find out about it? Um, so I was a horticulture intern, and I found out about the internship through my freshman year roommate, who was actually looking for internships, and was nice enough to tell me about it and she was like not into any major about plants so she just stumbled upon it and told me about it um and I interned here the summer after my freshman year and the last summer um and so let's all move on so what was your job title and your responsibilities so um I worked at Monticello for two summers the first year my job title was a horticulture intern in the second year, I was a seasonal horticulturalist or a um, rotating gardener. So the jobs varied a lot between the two years. Um, as an intern, I was there to really learn about like horticulture and help where they needed me. Um, we got to work with a lot of programs like Iris BG and some Trimble mapping equipment. 
which was really cool and like really expensive stuff that I'll probably never be able to touch again because it's like $30,000 for a piece of plastic that like satellite maps trees. So that was really cool. Um, and the internship lasted like 12 weeks and there were two other interns and we um, kind of rotated between the vegetable garden, the flower garden and the orchard slash vineyard. Um, so the intern's responsibilities within these rotations changed depending on the location. So in the vineyard I worked with one other person, Catalin, who's actually a really good friend of mine now. And um, we maintained the historic orchards and vineyards on campus and then maintained the Mont Alto Vineyard, which is the neighboring vineyard owned by the foundation. Um, let me see. In the vegetable garden, in the flower garden, they were pretty similar, but the vegetable garden is like hard work. Like um, Thomas Jefferson designed it, so it's a microclimate. So it's 10 degrees hotter in the vegetable garden. So it was like 110 degrees every day of work there. So it was terrible. Um, it was a really cool experience, but the vegetable garden was hard work. And um, in the flower garden, they got to help with the um, flower bed arrangements and the weed and um, cut like flowers and um, we did a lot of planting and seed collection. So that was pretty fun. Um, the second summer as a seasonal horticulturalist, I managed the interns, um, the horticulture interns pretty much. So I sort of guided them um, through like the, the stuff that I did, but it was kind of a position where I just emailed my boss again and I didn't have an internship plan. So um, they let me come back and that was a really great experience. So I mainly worked in the vineyard. So, so I um, just did a lot of like stuff with grapes. <laughs> and um, I think it was like a five acre um, vineyard. I can't really remember the exact name, but it was awesome. And I would totally recommend that it's like amazing. So you can see in some of the pictures um, with the, the like middle picture on the top that is um, Catalan on the left and then an intern. And then um, we rode around in these gators, which was really fun. And then um, there's Pat on the right. She was the vegetable gardener. She's a really cool lady. Um, let me see. So Monticello is in Charlottesville and I've grown up there like my whole life. So I just lived with my parents and um, commuted, but my boss actually ran to work every day. He was like a marathoner and he ran and a lot of the other interns and workers lived really close by. So it wasn't that bad to commute, but I did that by car. And then what did I learn there? So um, a lot, <laughs> I don't even think it's possible to say how much I learned there. So I learned about horticulture, history, historic preservation, um, hard work, they really expect a lot of you and um, it's so worth it 100%, but it's really hard work. And um, I learned a lot about my upbringing and privileges. Um, I learned about research, working with people, customer service, and so much more. You constantly have people, um, visitors at Monticello asking questions and um, it's hard to know everything, especially like the first couple of weeks when you're there and you're just like thrown into this like customer service, um, like, like situation and it's, you, you learn fast. So um, I love that internship. It was great. Um, I think I'll maintain relationships with those people forever. They're really great people. And um, I totally recommend that one. Um, let me see. And then I think that's all for the next one or I can go to the next one okay so this is an internship that I am doing this um summer kind of so it was planned to do after study abroad but that kind of got um canceled so this internship kind of like they worked with me a little bit on it but it's going to kind of be continued into next summer and I'll likely hopefully um, complete it then after next year's study abroad. Um, so it's a project done by Grounded, a landscape architecture firm in Charlottesville, Virginia. And they're really small, it's like three people. I think they're, they're pretty new, but um, I found out about this internship through um, like word of mouth pretty much. Just like get to know people and be involved in your community. And it, it really, 
um, it really pays off to, to network and um, connect with people. So Anna Boschenstein is the principal and she emailed me last semester and asked if I would want to be their research intern for this summer. So um, that is how I'm involved in this project. And I grew up in Esmont, Virginia. So it's like an old quarry town. And um, they like, there was this rail line that went through it and it's just really cool. Um, so I'm excited. I wish I knew more about it right now, but I'm excited to research that more this summer um, because they're doing a rails to trails project within the town. And um, so I guess I'll go through the questions. Um, so my job title is to make a book with like text images, diagrams, outline the um, route of the rail line and parcels and kind of make GIS maps um, for about a four mile section of the trail. And then they'll use this to kind of help guide their designs and um, like whatever they want with it. <laughs> so um, I was supposed to be working in their office in downtown Charlottesville, which is an awesome place. Totally recommend like visiting Charlottesville if you haven't. Um, but that kind of got changed. So I'm virtually interning starting like next week. <laughs> um, so um, that's a little different for this summer. And I am actually living at my mom's house and this trail goes right behind it. So I'm basically living on the project site. So that's pretty cool. Um, then let's see. Another cool aspect of this is that it's funded by Bama Works, which is the Dave Matthews Band Foundation. So um, they support charitable programs primarily in the Charlottesville, Virginia area. So that's really cool. And um, just kind of neat to make a mark um, in internships. And I think that's really something that, um, whether we realize it or not, that's what we are getting the opportunity to do in these internships. And I just think that's an awesome aspect. And that's pretty much it. There's pictures of the historic, but Esmont town is super small now. So it's like probably like 100 people max, but it's really cute. And that's all I have to share. All right, so this is me. Um, this is an internship that I did uh, last summer, I think, with a residential design build firm in Reston, Virginia, which is where I'm from. Uh, let me bring up the questions so I can make sure I answer them. Um, hmm. Email. Sorry, I'm unprepared. Whatever, I'll just kind of talk randomly about it. Okay, so um, I got this internship um, by going to the uh, horticulture dinner that happens, um, I think, yearly at Tech. So um, actually, I've I've known about this this company for a while. Um, I tried to get an internship with them like right out of high school, but they never got back to me because, you know, I was just like, I didn't know anything. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I, I met uh, their production manager at the Hoarder Wilshire Dinner, talked to him for a bit, and, um, and uh, through him, I kind of applied. And um, the interview process was kind of interesting. So I interviewed in person, and I, I got there and I was interviewed by this guy named Anthony, uh, who would later become my supervisor. And he gave me like a test. So <laughs> he gave me like a packet like full of plant pictures and he asked me to identify all of them. Um, luckily, I got them almost all right because I, I had worked at a garden center previously, so I knew all these plants. And then after that, he gave me like a sheet of graph paper on a clipboard. And then he wanted me to do a survey of like the small property like around uh, this little shed that we were being interviewed in so uh, I did a little site survey and um, I guess he thought I did a good enough job so uh, they hired me um, and it began the very fun uh, and pretty rewarding internship I'd say with, with Ben and Lane um, residential isn't really what I want to do like as a professional so I kind of like came into this 
like with the attitude that like, uh, I don't really know. I mean, I might learn some things, but I'm just kind of doing this because it's just a way to learn. But I kind of did develop an appreciation for it in that um, a lot of the design process that we go through in school is really similar. Um, it's the same stuff. It's just like your client is in a town of people. It's just like one person and one family. So you do all the same stuff, site inventory. You figure out um, what they're looking for, uh, what they want, what they need. Um, and then you kind of just like respond to it in creative ways. Um, let's see. So I think that um, residential uh, is a pretty good place to learn uh, some horticultural knowledge, um, specific, oh, also building people skills. That's a big one. Um, uh, installation knowledge, um, small scale solutions. And because you go through so many projects, because like they're all small scale and they just kind of turn over really quickly, you get to see a lot of different things. Um, you got to see a lot of different design ideas. Um, so I guess in this picture collage, you can see some of the things that I was involved with. So I got to go to a lot of um, installation sites and kind of see how they, how they worked. Um, everything in that office is hand drawn. So they're a little bit, um, a little bit old fashioned, but like not because they don't know how to use technology, just because they think that designs are better when they're hand drawn and they're right. Um, it's just, it's just better. So you can see um, a kind of sketch over there on the right, which I think my supervisor Anthony did for our house. Um, you can see on the bottom, there's a perspective that I drew um, to bring to a client meeting to kind of sell a design. And there's kind of a final product uh, on the bottom left. They, they do really beautiful work. So, so you can see that's kind of like a more naturalistic garden down on the lower left side. Um, and I took that photo myself. So let's see. They really had me doing like all sorts of stuff. Um, they have a pretty well-developed internship program. Um, and they really try to get you doing everything that the company does. So I was going to client meetings. Um, I was going to installation sites. I was um, drawing up um, design plans. I was in perspectives. Um, I was like going to the county to get plats for sites. One time they even like, like, like Anthony just like gave me a leaf that had like a disease on it. And he told me to go to the extension and find out what disease this was. <laughs> and so I did that. Uh, they also uh, sometimes involved me in like business meetings so I could see how they like like track their finances and like keep track of all their clients and things. Um, so I saw everything. It was pretty cool. Um, let's see. So I guess I learned a lot about like the kind of designer client relationship. Um, it's obviously different with like when you're only working with one person. Or, or like one family, um, but like it still really helps to like pay really close attention to like what they're saying, like when you're talking to them, and like who they are as people, and to remember details about them. Um, like uh, my my supervisor Anthony like gave me this one example that um, he was like working with this client, uh, and they did like a project uh, and a design build, and then like two years later um, they called back and they wanted to have something else done um, and so anthony goes back to their house and um he kind of reintroduces himself to the family and um and like their like daughter is in the room or something um and the daughter comes up and says oh hey i remember you and then anthony says oh yeah i remember you too big baseball fan right and she's like oh yeah how'd you remember that and it was like, I don't know, it's like been two years. I don't know why I'm up with these details, but like developing that, that kind of like relationship with like whoever your client is, it just kind of helps build trust um, and, and, and kind of continues a long-term relationship where you can remember details like that. Um, so from that respect, I guess I did kind of develop an appreciation for it. Um, Let's see. I have some things written down here. 
Um, the company was cool in that like they did a lot of like things together, did a lot of fun things together. Um, we all went to Dumbarton Oaks like as a company, which was really interesting. Um, so I got to see like my supervisor Anthony like sketching and just like see what he was making notes of and stuff. Um, and on my like, I think on my last day with the company, we went kayaking at Great Falls or somewhere. I think. Oh no no no, it was in the Shenandoah. Um, so that was that was really fun. Um, so I would say like, don't be afraid to kind of get involved in the company's social life wherever you are. Um, there is definitely a place for that, um, and it, and it really does help build uh, relationships um, long term. And I still talk to Anthony. Uh, pretty regularly and he's always asking me if there's anybody in the program who's interested in a residential design build because they're looking to hire um i think uh, pretty soon um and they're a really 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 good company uh they pay really well um they pay me really well which is kind of surprising even though i like to know anything um so i guess that's all i have to say about that I think I feel like that brings up a good point about if well first of all like thank you everybody who shared that was really nice and that made me happy to hear about everybody's experiences um if you think that it would be of interest to include like links to these people's website or just like anything then maybe including that on the the internship question sheet um might be helpful too so I was just thinking that if you all are done interning there, then maybe other people would enjoy trying to do the same opportunity after hearing about it. Um, yeah, so we could do like, if there are any like questions anyone has about that stuff, we can answer those. And then we could also talk about maybe just general tips and strategies for applying to internships, like interviewing for them, looking for them, even if you don't get them, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so we could just like open it as a general discussion about really anything. But yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, I, took, I took lots of notes, so I'm gonna like type those out too, but yeah, anyways, okay. <laughs> uh, I would say if you're interested, in residential design build definitely go to the horticulture dinners um great place to meet people and you know i mean like i'm like really introverted and i hate these kind of things but it's like you just gotta do it like it sucks but you just gotta do it and, and it is actually fun like once you kind of get talking to people if you really click with somebody it's pretty cool um i i, I feel like i clicked with connor at the horticulture dinner um he's like he's like a really like funny kind of like matter of fact guy just doesn't say very much but like when he does say something it's pretty funny um and like we just kind of like personality wise i think we clicked and that uh that definitely helped me kind of get in with them so yeah i think meeting people in person and talking in person is a nice quality Usually I'm the first one to like, I feel like emailing is my go-to a lot of the times. Like I don't think there's a reason for students to be afraid to just reach out and email people um, with whatever motives. It's okay if you directly are like looking for a job. I don't think there's any shame in that either, but meeting them in person. Yeah, like looking for those opportunities. Yeah, I would also say that in general, like people like to be asked like what they're doing, like their field, you know, if they're happy with their job. Um, and even if you're like, if you don't get a job or you're reaching out to somebody like in your email or like in the interview, just say like, ask like what else you can do or um, kind of like how they got to where they are just so you can get some feedback even if like in the long run, you don't end up with the internship, it's always helpful to ask people 
kind of like their favorite parts of the job and least favorite parts, just so you know. And I think I've emailed a bunch of a bunch of people and they always like just respond and like they can critique your portfolio or um, kind of like how you reach out to them as well. So that's also useful. I think another thing that's really important is like getting involved in um, like organizations that you're interested in and that are related to landscape architecture or horticulture. Um, I kind of like know that I kind of got connected with the internship I'm about to start doing through a um, like Friends of Esmont like organization for this, um, the town that this project is in and Anna is actually like the head of it. So um, if you care about something and it's like, like not a huge, I don't know, I would just, I would just definitely like get involved in um, stuff that you think is important and you care about because that's going to make your job satisfaction so much greater too. I second that, like, kind of spreading your resources, joining other organizations. Like, I talked about NCLC. That was a really good way to see things and just anything that's kind of something that you're interested in that could be even vaguely related to landscape architecture. They'll have job fairs at Virginia Tech or conferences or any kind of thing like that. And any kind of outside enrichment that you go to is a place where you can meet people and make connections. And, I mean, especially people out in the field, they want to help you. So if they know, even if you're talking with someone who can't help you, but they know someone who they can put you in contact with, like that's something that they'll do because you're a student. I think that's something that you shouldn't underestimate. One thing that I've heard recently is that internships aren't, like firms don't really see internships as a way to like get as much work done as possible. They see it as a way, it's just talent scouting because we're students and that's something that they're interested in. So we have a nice competitive edge there. I think I can definitely kind of echo the whole idea of expanding beyond specifically landscape architecture because working at an arboretum, I didn't really know a ton about trees at all, but I grew kind of an interest in arboriculture after that and ended up taking a class um, yeah, it was last fall, um, by Dr. Wiseman, who's like super cool guy, um, and totally into urban forestry, which I didn't even know was a thing, but it's really connected to what we do. And I think that, yeah, it just opens up a lot of opportunities, um, outside of our realm, but anything you do that's related to landscape is only going to benefit you in the end. So whether it's geared towards horticulture or geared towards a residential design firm or researching like Lainey, that whole thing about historic preservation is so cool to me. And that's something that I've never done before, but, and I wouldn't have really even thought to even look for things like that, but everything is really connected and is always a really helpful thing. So don't limit yourself to just landscape internships because there are so many opportunities. Yeah, I think, wasn't it at the Landscape Architecture Foundation's, like, one of their webinars is Barbara Deitch, Deutsch. Um, she went on and said, like, professionals should start kind of straying outside of the realm of, like, landscape architecture, because we can have, like, a lot of impact in other fields as well, like, strictly if you're speaking to the labels. So, I guess just knowing that overall, that's like a common theme with students and also professionals is kind of nice, like not to limit yourself just with that label. I'm trying to think of any others. <laughs> um, I can talk about uh... I, before the, uh, I guess, apocalypse happened, I went to Charlotte to uh, interview with uh, Land Design. Um, and they were, at first they had been talking about um, how all internships just do like a Skype call, but since school was out and I hadn't 
seen any reports of COVID in Charlotte. I said I could be there. I drove in and the first person I saw besides the receptionist was uh, an alumni um, that I had um, been in studio with. So I, this is kind of preaching the choir, but come hang out with the upperclassmen because you never know who's going to uh, be doing your interview at um, these inter internships, especially um, if you're just kind of going in blind. Yeah, come talk to us. <laughs> we really appreciate it. <laughs> if we don't talk to you first, you know. <laughs> and also, I guess that could stem to, I don't know, like, this is a little bit more difficult to do, but establishing relationships with students outside of our main classes, too. Um, visiting, like, Kogel, because we're far away from them, but you can still go see what they do and um, like staying in touch with what's going on there too. I don't know, not that you would necessarily f see their faces later on, but it might be like a good way to kind of hear about different opportunities. Well, I think later in the summer, we're going to try to do a portfolio based um, meeting. Not sure how we're going to work that out yet, but if it's helpful, like we could also incorporate, I don't know, like, well, resume is going to be incorporated into that, but also like interviewing type of tips. But if anything, if anyone has anything to share about like specifically interviewing, we could include that here too. I know that everybody seemingly I would just all say the more you do, the easier it gets. Mm -hmm. Just take comfort in that, I guess. <laughs> I think a lot of people talked about people skills, um, and that's super important. And it's really hard, I think, especially right now, because our contact with a lot of people is so limited. But I guess just like try and stay, try to stay like engaged with at least the people around you and don't lose your people skills because they're, they're so valuable to just be able to have a conversation with somebody, especially like in an interview, because as much as they're looking at your resume and your portfolio and what have you that they can see on paper, they're looking at how kind of a person you are and how you talk to them and if you're respectful and things like that. Something that Terry said at like a previous thing that I think is a really good idea is that now is a really good time to reach out to people by email that you're interested in their firms and start building a relationship with them because you get to hear what they're doing right now with their firms, see if their projects are interesting, kind of learn about new hip young projects that are happening right now. And all the while you're building a good relationship that shows your professionalism, your interest, all those good things. Terry definitely did say new hip and young. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a Terry quote to me. <laughs> I feel like too, I know it might have been said more than once during this, but um, that we all like maybe some of these opportunities, we didn't really have that much experience. And so we took, you know, we tried to go like a different route and stuff, but maybe knowing your strengths and really like being confident in the things that you do know and not always just dismissing like yourself because you don't know certain things because you should yeah you should just I think you should go into interviews that way too um and yeah like no understanding what you're confident in and what how you can be useful I would say you know like as a general rule we know more than we think we do when it comes to being like in the professional setting and like working at a professional caliber, maybe they're per like they're in, in the line production work is like might mind boggle you a little bit and seem kind of out of your league, but that's just like having a team of people working together to make it. Um, but when you're definitely like sitting down to talk to people, they're speaking the same language as you, especially at the interview table, you can definitely see 
like yes they might have like a, a bit more like on the job experience but you still know what you're talking about especially the people in this call who are in the last couple of years of of uh school like you you definitely have more skills than you give yourself credit for in a lot of places i would also recommend just being yourself at least in interviews and also at in internships and jobs because you never know like what part of your background is going to be important and maybe stick out to certain people and that is really going to help you um, make connections and network with um, coworkers and peers. I would also say um, pay attention to the kind of social environment you like in the workplace. Um, I learned a lot about kind of like myself by doing that residential design build internship, even though I don't want to do residential design build because the company was very, um, kind of had a flat hierarchy. All of the designers um, kind of felt like, like partial owners of the company. Um, and the boss was more just like another employee who was, I mean, obviously had power, but um, there was a lot of autonomy um, of each designer in the firm. And um, the installation crews um, were like friends with the designers and that they kind of, uh, like one designer would work with one installation crew all the time. So they build a relationship um, and, you know, like everybody was involved in social activities. And I kind of felt like I was treated as an equal there, um, even though I was an intern. And I, like, I kind of just appreciated that, that the social environment was really nice. So, um, I feel like like at least like 50% of job satisfaction just comes from who you're working with and not necessarily the work you're doing. Um, the work you're doing is important, of course, but you know, if you don't feel like you belong somewhere, um, then you're not going to like it there. So yeah. Also, in my experience, working hard is never going to hurt you. So um, in pretty much all the jobs I've had, but especially the landscape ones, um, if you go the extra mile and you really like help out your coworkers or volunteer to do things, um, it's really going to pay off. And I would just totally recommend that because talking about like kind of social like hierarchies, Alex, like in um, one of my internships, they, um, in the Monticello one, the, a couple of the interns um, really like to goof off and it definitely was noticed. So um, know that like what you're representing um, and know who you are and how you represent yourself in a workplace as well. That's really important. Well, I think those were all great. Um, we can keep like a running list of those or something, but that was really nice to talk about that. Um, yeah, Sam, do you want to do the sure. remaining stuff? <laughs> Next week, we will not be meeting um, just for 4th of July weekend, just in case people are out of town or spending time with family or friends. So we won't meet next week, but we will meet the following week. And that is going to be led by Abby Potter. And we're gonna be talking about study abroad and our experiences leading up to that. Um, maybe Terry can chime in and talk about maybe next summer and what that might be looking like, but just to give you a pseudo study abroad experience on whatever that July date is. It's the 10th. Yeah, so not next week, but we will be meeting on July 10th. And the sketch prompt of the week is coming up. So here's the prompt right here. So I'll just read it. Um, the modern world is a world of atoms and fragments. The poet does not speak to the biologist. The historian knows nothing of the engineering. The physicist shuns the priest. Understanding is carved into spheres of influence. And to stray them into the domain of another is to invite suspicion or ridicule. Speci specialization focus is the way to advancement. Resisting this fragmentation is difficult, particularly when it means foregoing 
the rewards reaped by those who do not. But divisions of mind and discipline have blinded us to the tangledness of the world. They made us, they made us to forget how no thing, however we may yearn to make it so, is ever any one thing. So embrace the connection of all things, find the hitches, run your fingers over them, take their measure, work to weave the world back together thread by thread. So this is kind of, I think a great segue off of what a lot of what we were talking about is that landscape does connect to a lot of things at a big scale and also at a very small scale. So take that and interpret it as you want and then post it to Instagram, Instagram and use the hashtag mylandscapevt or email us your sketches and we can share them on Instagram and also with each other because it's great. Yes. And Gracie runs that, so if you do have her information, you can always send those directly to her, too. Or anything else. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop recording here.